Привет, друзья! This week we are at the Vnukovo airport here in Moscow, Russia, and we have the biggest entry list of the season. 37 cars were in the qualifier, which, um, with that amount of cars here, that predictably ended with a big smash. Uh, this track is very narrow, and it's uh, really been eating up equipment lately. Uh, a couple cars actually fell out in practice and had to go to their backup cars due to some suspension damage, so that'll be interesting to see with uh, all these uh, mechanical retirements. And we actually had a surprise on the pole this week, so uh, we'll take you to the track. Pole sitter here at Vnukovo Airport is Christopher Loxanen in the number 73 driving for El Torres Kessler GP. He leads the field to the green flag and it was a pretty ragged start, but uh, Nicholas Corridovo starting on his outside. It's actually the inside for the first turn, but uh, Loxanen gets the advantage. Head here into turn number two, but they're still side by side as they come through there and down the straightaway. They almost make contact there, but Corridovos will sweep by Loxanen and he will take the lead head into turn three as Loxanen hits the wall there after getting on the rumble strips. This is a temporary circuit and nobody's really used to it, not even the one off drivers here from Russia. As uh, Corridovos continues to open up his lead over Loxanen as he heads into the hairpin here, and uh, that was a trouble spot during the qualifier, and I think there's some smoke back there. Sam Brown and Chester Benson collide as Benson just drives across the track and spins Sam Brown the other way as he collides with Cody Deke and Ben Worthington. I believe Preston Bell was also invol involved in that. As now Sam Brown's day goes from bad to worse, as Chester Benson, he just sweeps across the track, turns him their head into the hairpin, just doesn't bother to break, and slams into Cody Deke. Uh, Chester Benson, uh, the pedal on the right is the break, by the way. Uh, and Nicholas Cordovas continues to lead over Christopher Loxon as Loxon has started to get his car going. He's cut down the gap a little bit, but Cordova still holds a very strong lead here in the opening laps as we're gonna go back and go through the field here is Kirill Bujan making a pit stop at the end of lap one he's one of the few one-off drivers who actually managed to put himself into the field in the big smash that was the qualifier he actually got the final transfer spot as he brings his car into the pits he's reporting some problems with that car Piotr Lee, uh, Piotr Lee Vulcan here in the number uh, number 43 car Salvatore Torregrosa actually put this car into the field but they didn't quite have the money to run the full distance, but Leovkin here in the 43, he brought his, himself on board with his own uh, cadre of sponsorship, and it got him a drive in the main race. He actually tried to qualify the 0-2 car, but was just a few positions out, so now they've got TNK on this car, uh, and a couple other local Russian sponsors. And here is Louis Ballard picking up where he left off after he won Karyala. He is running in third place right now right behind Loxanen and right in front of Sergei Yakovsky. Uh, Rus Autosport, the uh, team that owns Yakovsky and uh, Chernov, actually tweeted saying that they will try and beat uh, they will try and beat Manticore Engineering here and so far they haven't been able to do it as Ballard currently leads that group. Uh, Kirill Bujan after coming out of the pits, he has an issue with the brakes and slides the car into turn one and hits the wall, stops the car on the track and uh, I think he'd get a toe back to the pits after this as we go on board and just watch as there's just no brakes and he overshoots the turn, uh, tries to get it around but to no avail as he goes into the wall and gets a toe back to the pits. Tom Delgado here doing a good job. He managed to put his car on the grid and he's currently running in 11th place right behind Michael Grant and right in front of uh, a couple other cars back there but Tom Delgado, the only representative from Tom Delgado Racing to make the show here this week. He's uh, got Vladivostok FM, one of the local radio stations in the area on board, and he's giving them a pretty good run. He's running up in the top 15, and hopefully we'll see more of him as this race goes on. Here is a local driver, uh, Yevgeny Kuznetsov, and he is a rally driver, I'm uh, assuming by the sounds of uh, the crowd cheering his name and uh, he is relatively unknown here in the States, so hopefully we'll see more of him. He's currently running in 27th, and here is Vitaly Mavrati driving the MMM 69L car, and he is currently running in 29th. It's good to see a bunch of local drivers here in the field, as he currently runs behind Craig Yonser there in the number 51. 
This car finished 11th in the qualifier, and I honestly didn't expect it to make it in. And uh, I don't think the team did either, because I don't know if they had enough money to uh, get enough tires to make it through the entire distance. Here's Bobby Dollar coming in at the end of lap 4. He's reporting a puncture on that car. Tough break for him. But he comes in from 15th place, so he was on track to have a good run up until then. Here is the highest running of the local drivers, as Sergei Yakovsky is currently running in 4th place, leading the Rus Autosport Brigade. His teammate Leonid Chernov is currently running in 6th place. And as I mentioned before, this team tweeted earlier in the week that they that their goal is to beat Manticore Engineering as uh, they tried to do so at Karyala but were unsuccessful but here on uh, their home turf I think they might be able to do so because right now they're leading uh, Clara Kindall and, uh, and Clara Sear but all they have to do is get by Louis Ballard and they've actually achieved that goal so I think they're really going for the win here today as uh, they're really trying to mix it up with uh, Manticore Engineering. First, one of the local drivers that have a problem is Pyotr Leovin, Leovkin, and uh, it looks like Dan Ferre Arca braked into him there. Uh, Arca brakes are notoriously unreliable here, though they're the, they are the official brakes of the PCC Cup Series, as we're gonna go on board Ferre here, as it looks like, looks like Ian Elias has a problem, and he comes up on Leovkin here, coming out of the final turn, and he just runs into the back of him, not bothering to use his brakes at all. And that's going to severely hamper his day, as we see what happened to Ian Elias here as he comes through that turn right there. And the car just breaks down, so he pulls it off to the side uh, from 18th place, and he parks it right there, and I think he's going to be able to get back into the race, as that problem does not look to be terminal. Here is Kirill Bujan, and he is back on the track on lap 7. Uh, despite being in there for the past four or five laps, so good to see that they got that car running again. He's currently running in last place, but a couple cars have already started to drop out, such as Leovkin, and uh, I don't know if Ferre has or not, but uh, hopefully he'll be able to get some positions back. Here's Cameron Taylor, and he's running in eighth place on lap eight, uh, doing a good job here today. He's running in front of his teammate. At the moment, uh, Greg Maddox is currently back in 13th place, his teammate, and uh, I guess he's decided to step it up quite a bit because, to be frank, Maddox has been outperforming him for the past few weeks, and uh, there's some question as to if uh, Cameron Taylor or Maddox is putting in more effort or if they're just giving them better cars. Uh, ben Worthington into the pits here on lap 9, and uh, he pulls into the pits, and uh, he's reporting a problem with that car as he pulls out of the pits. He slams into the wall uh, once, twice, and he's uh, he's up against the wall for some reason, going full throttle down the pits, and he doesn't bother to turn there. And uh, there's definitely something wrong with that number six car as he's still on the wall. It looks like the steering is locked to the right on that car, and he's going to take this opening here onto the track, and we can see just how damaged that car is. I really don't know what's wrong with that car, but there's definitely something majorly wrong as he's putzing around on the track. They bring him back into the pits the next lap to see what's wrong, and uh, I don't know if they're going to find anything as he pulls the car into the pits, and uh, they're going to repair the damage, send him back out on track. I don't think they found anything wrong with that car, and he does the exact same thing. He slams into the wall again and is grinding against it, and... Uh, speeding down the pits and are you going to turn? No you're not. He's not going to turn once again and uh, a couple cars that were behind him were reporting that there was fluid on the track so I think he was dropping something and uh, he's going to pull that car back out on track here again and uh, looks like it's got a bit more damage than last time so I think they're going to call him back to the pits uh, to get that damage repaired and they would ultimately find that the car was leaking oil on the track and it would prove to be terminal as Ben Worthington falls out of the race early. Here is Nicholas Cordova trying to put Preston Bell a lap down and it looks like Loxanen has made up quite a bit of ground. And now Bell is blocking Cordova's for some reason as Loxanen pulls up to his rear bumper as he tries to send him a message here that uh, we're the leaders, get out of our way as Bell had actually pit a few laps earlier and Bell is still holding up Cordovos for some reason I don't know why he's doing that as now Loxanen drops back Louis Ballard is 
right on Loxanen's bumper as, oh, it looks like uh, Bell is all over the track now as Bell decides to let uh, Corridovos go here. And, oh, Corridovos gets spun by Bell out of the lead. And Bell goes around there. Oh, a tough break for Corridovos as we go on board Preston Bell as he swings wide and then cuts across the track and gets into both Loxanen and Corridovos. As now Loxanen takes the lead from Corridovos in a tough break for all of those involved as Preston Bell just basically ruined the race of Nicholas Corridovos now. Despite being involved in that incident, the real beneficiary of that was Christopher Loxanen as he now moves into the lead around Nicholas Corridovos and he leads over Louis Ballard in that number 41 OK Soda car. But Loxanen's entry in this race was actually a little bit uh, late but the officials decided to let it slide as he had put on one heck of an effort at Karyala, and he was actually leading when the engine expired on that car. So hopefully, that El uh, now that they're here, El Torres Gessler GP can pull off the upset and get a win here at Vnukovo Airport as Loxanen leads early on. Going back a bit further in the field, here is Michael Grant, and he's currently running on lap, uh, lap 13. He's currently running in the 10th position. And uh, we haven't seen much of this car ever since Josh Marshall was injured at New York Auto Ring. Uh, best wishes to his recovery. But here is Michael Grant, and he is uh, currently putting this car in a good position uh, to do really well here today. He actually leads the Australian Motorsports Brigade in P10, so hopefully he can uh, do a good job with that. Vitaly Mavradi trying to put Preston Bell lap down, and Bell stuffs him in the wall and spins him out. Uh, not sure what you're doing there, uh, Preston Bell, but uh, it'd be advised that you don't drive like a dick around people who are putting you a lap down, lest you get called to the uh, to the official's office after a few moves like that. As now, uh, looks like uh, why are why are people spinning out uh, cars that they're trying to put a lap down? Can't they be a bit more courteous around each other? As now. That was Lenny Jacobs dumping Sam Brown while he was putting him a lap down. I'm not sure why you, have to, why you feel the need to drive uh, with your head up your butt like that on a track that's so narrow like this. As now John Bracci breaks down from P14. Tough break for him. Pulls that car off to the side. He's going to park it there and get a quick tow back to the pits. They're going to get that car repaired. As now, as Loxanen comes by, he gets stuck behind Bracci as uh, he tries to give Bracci a bit of room, but he hits the wall as John Bracci drives by. They're showing uh, Bracci the blue flag, but I'm not sure why he's ignoring it as he's trying to get out of the way now. But Loxanen gets into the grass there as now Louis Ballard uh, sees an opportunity and he's going to pounce as he gets into the back bumper of Loxanen, gives him a bit of shove there. He gets on the rumble strips and now uh, Loxanen will retake the lead, but he's still stuck behind John Bracci as he comes down this long straightaway. As Bracci is definitely a bit slower than Loxanen here as Loxanen pulls up to his rear bumper coming down the long straightaway as uh, Ballard closes in as well as Corridovos. Uh, Loxanen lays on Bracci's bumper telling him to get out of the way a bit and Bracci obliges as now uh, Bracci and Ballard make contact back there for second place. Uh, Bracci not giving these guys an inch of room for some reason as now uh, Loxanen continues to open his lead over Louis Ballard here as Ballard now catches up to him as he's held up by Sam Brown as he pulls to the outside and Loxanen pulls into Ballard and stuffs him into the wall there in that turn they're racing really hard for the lead really early on as now Loxanen gets stuck behind Sam Brown and Ballard sees an opportunity he pounces and he'll take the lead coming into this long straightaway as now Sam Brown is falling way back he got stuffed into the grass a bit there but Louis Ballard takes a commanding lead over Christopher Loxanen as he falls way back in the pack and now Sam Brown he falls back here he's trying to rough up Clara Kindall that's a bad idea he gets stuffed into the wall and he goes out of the race here on uh, lap 14 now as it looks like oh Gaspar D'Souza ran into him uh, as he was sitting right in the racing line as he tried to dump uh, Clara Kindle there, Clara Kindle gets into the wall as Sam Brown sits in the middle of the track and here comes Gaspar D'Souza running right into him and he's going to have a bit of side damage and uh, quarter panel damage as now. 
Ballard continues to lead, but I think that Loxon and dove into the pits a lap early. Yes, he did. Loxon and dove into the pits. Uh, th these are green flag pit stops at the moment, I believe, here on lap uh, 16. As now Loxon and bring brings his car into the pits as he speeds down the pit lane. Uh, I don't believe there is a pit speed here at Vnukovo Airport. He pulls his car into the pits, and they'll do regular service on that car. As now Ballard here leading. Uh, Kelly Blackwater cuts across his nose and stuffs herself into the wall as Ballard manages to still hold on to the lead, getting by Blackwater again there. Obviously furious at Blackwater for what she did, cutting across his nose like that. As we're going to go on board here and... Just no words can describe what happened there as Blackwater cuts across the track and gets into his quarter panel again for some reason. I think she was trying to take him out. I'm not sure why. Maybe it's because Ballard's been a bit dominant here. As now Cordova's roughs up Chester Benson for uh, no good reason. As, oh, they get into each other. And that takes Cordova's and Osir into the wall from second and fourth place. And I think that Cordova's day is done from that position so really tough break for him as he just tried to make an over exuberant move here trying to get by a lapped car despite he was going into the pits and he just slides across the track gets into Yakovsky and Ossier there so tough break for all of those cars second through fourth were all involved in that incident and uh, all of them are going to have some kind of damage Deacon Ferrer racing each other and they take each other into the pit wall as they both pile into the pit wall, as here's Louis Ballard coming into the pits, and he gets a bit of damage on his front end from that. As Deke goes onto his side, no word on his medical condition, as Ferre tries to limp his car around back to his pit stall. And here is Preston Bell and Dan Leclerc as they make contact, and Bell goes into the wall, and I think that that is rightfully deserved, as Preston Bell has been nothing but a nuisance to those who are trying to put him a lap down. So uh, props to you, Lecklider, for putting that car into the wall. And now your new leader is Leonid Chernov here in the number 16 as he leads over Michael Grant and Tom Delgado back there in the 67. As uh, I think they are reporting that they're going to pit this lap. And uh, this is lap 19 here. So these are definitely uh, regular scheduled green flag pit stops. And yep, there they go into the pits. Uh, Chernov, Grant, and Delgado are your top three at the moment and Greg Maddox comes in as well he is running in fourth place so when they come out of the pits here is your new leader Leonid Chernov as he has opened up quite a big gap over Michael Grant I guess they decided to work on their pit stops before this race as this is first and foremost a rally team and I think that Maddox has worked his way up into third place as now we've got problems back here on the number 73 car of Christopher Loxanen as he is reporting misfires in the engine of that car hopefully he can get that car back out on track it doesn't sound like it's a terminal issue sounds like it's something that they could fix on that car as I believe he's reporting he's losing power on that car it might be a spark plug that's an issue with that team and now Lecklayer gets stuffed into the wall by Mavrati after putting Preston Bell into the wall and that will be the end of the day for Dan Lecklayer as that car is now spewing uh, smoke as that actually happened right in front of the leaders as here is Michael Grant as he's put together an awesome drive up to second place uh, using excellent pit strategy to get that team up into a podium position uh, he doesn't really stand too much of a chance of catching Leonid Chernov in that 16 car but he's gonna do all he can to get that team up in the top three as currently he's put quite a big gap on Greg Maddox who's being challenged for that position by Sergei Yakovsky. So Yakovsky is making a move up towards the front as now we go back to Maddox, who is really putting on a drive as now he's in front of his teammate, who is currently running in fifth place. Cameron Taylor is up to fifth in that number 77 car, but he's still being outperformed by his teammate here in the number 78. Now I'm wondering if they're giving Maddox the better equipment as he has shot up through the field in the 78 car either that or some kind of pit strategy because he's been outperforming him week in and week out at this point but Cameron Taylor still giving that team a really good drive as now it looks like Maddox is stuck behind Barry Juveno but here is your leader who has opened up something like a 10 second gap on the rest of the field Leonid Chernov and this team they were adamant that they could beat Manticore Engineering on their home turf and they're definitely showing it 
as now Chernov is pulling out uh, what looks to be a big upset here in front of the home crowd despite uh, being at home. And Preston Bell gets turned by his teammate and he goes over and hits the catch fence as Chris Benson turned his own teammate and that will be the end of the day for Preston Bell here as we're going to go on board with Chris Benson, his teammate, as he holds up his teammate, swings across the track and he gets put on his roof and goes into the fence in the hairpin here we're gonna give you a slow motion view he gets hooked there and he hits the wall shoots across the track and the car gets hooked and he goes onto his roof there he goes over and he catches the catch fence with his left front quarter panel and lands on the track there a huge incident here in the hairpin and I honestly did not expect to see a car flip here this is the last track I expected to see a car go over at as now Michael Grant is leading the huge pack back there and oh we've got a car into the wall it looks like it's uh, Greg Maddox as he was battling with Sergei Yakovsky for the third position as Yakovsky uh, just he cuts across him trying to get uh, around Barry Juvenile there and he stuffs him into the wall as uh, it looks like Sergei Yakovsky is going to fall back a bit here as Cameron Taylor avenges his teammate by taking third away from Sergei Yakovsky. As I mentioned before, Cameron Taylor is up to third in this number 77 Inglesby, but it looks like that Sergei Yakovsky is going to squeeze past him here on the inside. I think Cameron Taylor might be letting him go after what happened to his teammate in the 78 with uh, Yakovsky the lap before, so he continues to be stuck behind the moving chicane. Barry Juveno in the 65. Tom Delgado putting a bit of pressure on Taylor there running in the top five. Surprising to see Tom Delgado up this high. Uh, good run for him here today. Uh, talk about turning around a team. Here's Mikko Ranton, and he's running in ninth place. Oh, we've got a car around over there. That's Chester Benson in the 30 car, but Mikko Ranton and definitely turning this team's fortune around. He has made the past three races, and he's put that car up near the top ten. We're going to see what happens to Cameron Taylor here as he just gets dumped by Sergei Yakovsky in the 61 and he gets put off the track there. We're going to go on board the 61 and see uh, this uh, this dump here as he's coming up to put him a lap down, and he just lays on his right rear quarter panel, and that's just a perfect dump by the 61 car, but now that's going to jam up a bunch of cars behind him. As you see here, he's uh, got Barry Juvenile on his outside, and Tom Delgado getting racy there on the inside. Going to make it three wide here, and he actually gets into Yakovsky and uh, they bounce off of each other and I don't think Barry Juveno took too kindly to that because he just got into the rear quarter panel of Delgado and put him into the pit lane. Uh, Tom Delgado into the pit lane as we watch here. Barry Juveno just turns him in there and he takes himself out of the race and Tom Delgado is now furious as he speeds down the pit lane here. Uh, good run just gone to waste as he was running in the top five when that happened. He's going to pull his car into the pits and get that damage repaired. Here is Leonid Chernov with a huge lead still over... Oh! There goes the engine on the 16. Tough break for him. He was on his way to win this thing. He had a gap of about 15 seconds over second place. Michael Grant, who we're going to try and see if he comes around here. Because you see he's just got this huge gap of a lead. And there's Michael Grant as he swings by and he's gonna take the lead here away from the stricken car of Lean and Chernov. A tough break for Chernov but this looks to be a golden opportunity for Michael Grant in the number 18 as he now inherits a huge lead that was given to him by Leonid Chernov and his stricken uh, Rus Autosport um, contraption. As you see here Chernov, he lets his teammate by, but he is going to block for him as Lewis Jones. He blocks Lewis Jones, and Jones doesn't take too kind of that. He spins him out, and Chernov goes suicidal. He takes Cameron Taylor with him, and he's trying to block a couple other cars there, uh, doing all he can, and Chester Benson just slams into the back of him, and that will take Lean and Chernov out of the race. He goes out uh, rather uh, spectacularly, and oh! Kelly Blackwater gets dumped in the back here. Same lap by John Bracci. I think uh, Bracci was trying to put Kelly Blackwater a lap down. She drives away fine. Here's Cameron Taylor, and he is now up to third place again, leading Mikko Rantanen. 
and Chris Winter and a couple other cars back there, but all these cars have got some damage of some kind, so this is quite amusing. We've got bent up quarter panels, smashed in front ends, and they're all racing for the top 10 position, so props to these guys for getting their cars as far up as they are. Here's one of the few local drivers who's still running. Yevgeny Kuznetsov is up to 16th position in his number 23, uh, Achiznaya Vodka, uh, I believe that says, uh, Kosovyet. And he is currently holding off Christopher Loxnin for the 16th position, so he's doing one heck of a job. He's put in quite a bit of pace, and uh, hopefully we'll see more of uh, Kuzi as we travel through Russia. Chris Benson trying to get put a lap down by Tom Delgado, and he puts Tom Delgado into the wall and gets himself spun into the wall there. Uh, I guess the Tener drivers are deciding to be horrible back markers today. As, uh, oh, Barton Sandy runs into the back of him. As all three Tener drivers now have had problems with that. And Greg Maddox just in the blind corner. He comes in and he runs into the back of Chris Benson. Not sure why he did that. Uh, you'd think his spotter would say something about that. And here is Chris Winter who is currently holding off. Uh, Lewis Jones and Ike Durbin and Jacob Eichholz and this is a great battle for the fifth position we've got going on here between all these drivers and Chris Winter is currently holding all of them off he's had one heck of a run along with everybody else behind him as you see Mikko Rantanen and a couple other cars up there but Chris Winter running in the top five Lewis Jones getting a good run in there Ike Durbin and Jacob Eichholz as well and you've got the Manticore cars behind them they haven't been able to make too many moves up in... Oh, and Kuzi gets dumped by Loxen in there. Oh, and Kirill Vujin goes into the wall too, and that's going to be the end of Kuzi's day. What looked to be such a promising run for him uh, goes out getting turned into the wall. It's a shame he went out. It, we hope to see more of him in this series as Michael Grant now has opened up just a massive lead over the rest of the field. The closest car to him is Sergei Yakovsky, and he's about 10 seconds back at this point, but it looks like there's a few lapped cars up ahead, as now we're gonna go and look at Yakovsky, who is the only competition for Grant at this point, and uh, it looks like they're gonna achieve their goal of beating Manticore, but they're not gonna beat Australian Motorsports here unless, unless some kind of miracle happens. Uh, it looks like is gonna be stuck in second place if he can't uh, get any more speed out of this uh, Roos Autosport contraption. I'm not sure exactly what to call it. It looks like it's got a mix between a Katsuv and an Omeka front end and uh, I'm amazed that they even got this car running to be entirely honest. Battle heating up for third here with just five laps to go. Cameron Taylor and Mikko Ranton and they collide. And they take each other into the wall and he shoots across the track and Cameron Taylor collects Chris Winter and goes over on his roof. We're going to go on board Chris Winter here. As you see, Mikko Ranton just hooks him, and he has nowhere to go. Slams right into Cameron Taylor, whose day is done from third place. And now Gaspar de Souza. This is the battle for 10th position, as now Brian Gallagher in front of him has inherited ninth. But Gaspar de Souza, who has just been... Uh, he ran into uh, Sam Brown earlier, and he got all that damage on the front end. He is now running in... 10th position and trying to hold off Pete Maverick and Ramsey Cockner for that position. And a couple laps later, they actually managed to get Chris Winter back out on track. He was the only one of those cars to be involved to get back out on track. So good job to that Lechleiter racing team as he comes out right in front of Sergei Yakovsky trying to give him some room there. But Chris Winter, the fighting spirit there. Oh, Yakovsky's not playing nice. He shoves him into the wall as uh, I think that... Uh, Yakovsky might actually get called to the hauler because he's been uh, not too kind to the rest of the field. As, oh, Jacob Eichholz gets put into the wall there by Clara Kindle as he's running in fifth position. As the Manticore car is getting a bit feisty now in the back. As uh, Eichholz is trying to move his way up towards the front as he's had a good run so far today. Aside from that little incident there. He was running in fifth place. As Michael Grant now trying to tiptoe his way tor uh, towards victory. Trying to work around the lap cars, one car at a time, being as patient as he can uh, with Kelly Blackwire. As now he squeezes into a gap there. Ian Elias behind him has had all sorts of problems today. Uh, as Greg Woodard in front of him is the last car on the lead lap for, at this moment in 19th position. As Chris Winter lets... Uh, oh! 
he gets put into the wall there by Sergei Yakovsky, and I don't think that that was necessary at all, as Chris Winter was actually sliding over to give him room. But Yakovsky is racing. Uh, he is just trying as hard as he can to catch up to Michael Grant. Lapped cars be damned, apparently. As here, we've got really tough racing between Ike Durbin and Louis Ballard. And Ballard gets stuffed into the wall, and so does Ike Holtz gets turned by Claire Aussier into the wall there. So really tough racing back here for uh, some of the top five, top ten positions as Ballard is trying to work his way around Lenny Jacobs as he does so right there. And Kelly Blackwater gets dumped into the wall by Sergei Yakovsky with just a handful of laps to go as Yakovsky is just making mincemeat of these back markers. But oh, and there is Greg Maddox. But oh, uh, tough break for Maddox as he just had nowhere to go. But nobody would be able to touch Michael Grant and he takes his first career win here at the Vnukovo Airport replacing Josh Marshall in this car. Sergei Yakovsky finishes in second place with a very heavily damaged car uh, due to taking out all those lapped cars. I don't think the officials took too kindly to that and they called him to the office. Lewis Jones gets a very strong third place for Australian Motorsports so that's an Australian Motorsports 1-3. Louis Ballard finishes fourth, strong run for him, as well as Ike Durbin in fifth place. Very good run for the Great Lakes Motorsports team. Clara Kindall for once doesn't wreck, and she finishes in sixth place. Claire Aussier, despite the damage she got from colliding with Nicholas Corridovos, finishes seventh. Jacob Eichholz, strong run for him, despite getting put into the wall a couple times late, finishes eighth. Brian Gallagher, very, very quiet run for him. He finishes in ninth place, and rounding out your top ten is Pete Maverick, who managed to get by Gaspar D'Souza late in the running, and he rounds out your top ten.